All right. Do you know this guy? People say he goes by the name of Prime Gene, aka the Prime Time, and uh, he's a famous streamer, famous YouTuber. He does a lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff on the internet. And actually, he was one of my first sources when I started learning Rust. And for me, he was he always been the Rust guy. So like when I always wanted to figure out something about Rust, I always look up to his YouTube videos and uh, see if there is anything I could learn from him. And of course, I can say that the Rust community is a loads of good content creators, good people that actually I've learned a lot uh, writing Rust. But you know, I'm not a specialist. I have loads of skill issues. I'm on the I'm the worst one to write this kind of programming language. But then I discover that the primogen he betrayed me. Okay, this is just for, for entertainment uh, purpose. But yes, he betrayed me. <laughs> yeah, well, the way they bet he didn't actually betray me. So first, he created this nice application called Terminal.Chop. And I, I can show you guys really quickly here. Terminal.Chop. And uh, it was really it's a really cool application that you can actually run doing an SSH into it. And this is basically an SSH app. And I uh, really like it. Um, it was really cool. You know, really cool to see about like how they did it, how you interact with the application. You can actually buy a coffee shop here, yeah, so you can go to the cart and then you can do email and then all the stuff. And then you can do the the payment itself. Uh, really nice, really cool. And I really wanted to do something like this. So how I gonna beat Primogen on his own game? I gonna build an SSH app in Rust. Yes. Damn right you're here there. I'm gonna build the SS app in Rust. Even though I'm not that proficient in Rust, I'm gonna go and try to do it. And how we're gonna do it, I'm gonna show you guys uh, how I'm uh, gonna do it. So come back here to the screen. You see here that it's a video about two months ago that the Primogen has actually uh, was creating a SSH and Bubble Tea app. And uh, on one of his live streams as well, like the, the on the React, um, he react in Miami. He was actually showing off, like how, showing how he was building the application itself. So they were using Go and they're using Bubble Tea. That is this library here by Charm. Charm is actually a uh, Charm is institution. Look like the open source institution. They have loads of nice uh, open source projects over there. So you can actually check it out if you like Go. And uh, I bet people who are proficient in Go, they already know about this uh, this project. And know about these libraries but for me that's something that's new so i saw this wish here that way can, you can create ssh app and wish actually has some features some other libraries that from the charm itself they created one of them is bubble t so the bubble t is this one that uh, is like a, a fun functional state way to build them app so it basically you create this kind of ui into the application you have like these nice effects and everything and most of these UI components were built using this library here called Bubbles, that the charm itself they created. And uh, these bubbles here, it was a really cool set of uh, set of UI uh, elements that you can use on your own application and got me got me really inspired on what I'm gonna do. So how I gonna do it? Uh, I I already wrote, wrote here what, what I'm gonna do it, how I'm gonna do it. I'm going to build my SSH app use creating a UI module, a CLI framework, and a SSH interaction. That's the most, that's basically what I'm going to be doing. I still don't have a base idea of the application itself. I just wanted to actually go there and create the SSH application and create actually a framework in Rust that I can do it. I bet that it might have something there and I, I haven't, I haven't actually researched about it. <laughs> Uh, bear in mind that if you have something, if you heard about something that I can build SSH apps in Rust in a very fast way, please leave a comment down below. I'm going to pin it if you have it. And uh, I'm going to actually leave as well links of uh, what I'm building. I'm going to build everything in public and everything open source as well. So the first one, the UI module, I actually already created. It's <laughs> called Rustable. But basic inspiration here, right? There's a bubble, so I have a Rustable. So that's the basic of it. And uh, I will I created the components library here, the UI components for the terminal here. So you're gonna see it has here. You see here I have the test input, I have the text area, I have the spinner component, I have uh, I have more, I have tables and I have loading and a viewport as well. 
that is more stuff I wanted to do. So it is here is uh, I open some uh, I open some some issues now just to actually bear in mind to bear in my mind what I need to build in order to to fin finalize this library. And I already put this library on cargo. And the the best part is I already got roasted. <laughs> Well, so I posted here on Reddit in order to actually get some feedback. And really, it's really good that I got roasted because I like feedback. And uh, the first guy here say, you don't want to use lazy static. And uh, I feel like the lazy static is very off with my spinner. And he said that he you don't want to use for anything new. And uh, he actually asked if I'm aware of Ratatouille. Ratatouille is this nice application here as everyone on the Rust, almost everyone in the Rust community is using. Uh, Ratatouille to build actually UIs for the terminal and it's a really good application. I thought of using it at the beginning, but then at the same time, I thought that it could be an overkilling to use a powerful library and a powerful library to build just small components, so a small UI elements for the terminal. But then I'm going to give it a try on my uh, on the timer that I'm creating. So I see like uh, how it goes, if it's simple, if it's easier. I'm gonna actually reapply to add the all the rest of the my terminal UIs and uh, and then reupload and create a new version of my Rust library. So that's pretty much it. I lay down now how specific we're gonna be doing and uh, how I'm gonna be uh, how I'm gonna be rummaging on his own game <laughs> and I even clean up my Rust API to actually use as my uh, dummy version of a server where they're going to be like sending my code over there and running and test it out to see everything is running and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for the moment guys and uh, thank you guys for watching i'm gonna leave the links the link of the library on the description below you guys can check it out you can open issues and can fix it if you want you can contribute as well this that would be really nice and it would be very thoughtful of you helping me trying to be Tamaji on his own game, okay? <laughs> That's pretty much it for today, guys. Uh, if you like it, leave a like, subscribe, and as always, this is the PR Review.